Formula One launch week gets serious now. We've got Mercedes and Red Bull launching on the same day. We're here right now to talk about the Mercedes. McLaren are following tomorrow. A lot of interest in that one. And then Ferrari on Friday. Before you know it, we'll be at testing and we'll be bringing you even more videos. But for now, it's the Mercedes W10 and Jake Boxall leg is back in the hot seat to talk us through it. JBL, I think the thing we found most interesting about this, after a few days of some of the smaller teams not really showing their hand, either because as it's emerging, some of the cars aren't ready yet, or they're just playing secrecy games for who knows what reason. Mercedes, straight out of the box, here's what the car looks like. We've seen it on track already, as we'll get to in a minute. They're not messing around, are they? Definitely not. This is just a statement of intent, isn't it? Um, Mercedes just coming out of the box going, yeah, this is our car. So deal with it. Um, and you can just tell by the amount of complexity that you can see right there on this picture. Um, they're not hiding anything with Photoshop. They're not using perhaps, I don't know, a part that they're never going to really use. This is, just looks like the real deal, doesn't it? And as you've said, it's already been out on track. So this is 100% what we're probably going to see at pre-season testing and maybe for the first round as well. Yeah, it feels like a bit of a statement of confidence from Mercedes. There's no, there's no time or no need to play games. Let's just get on with it and get on with the real work. This is, without doubt, the biggest team yet we've seen tackle the new regulation changes for 2019. And in those areas, what stands out to you from what we've seen so far in the W10? Well, again, and I appreciate I'm sort of repeating myself a little bit here, but the front wing, again, is probably the biggest bit of this year. And Mercedes have taken their own approach to it. Um, you know, you can either look, to, look at the other two teams and you see a lot of similarities, but Mercedes have created, it's very sort of swept in, it's like a spoon shape on each flap. And essentially that's just trying to recoup as much downforce as possible, try and direct some flow outboard, which is also leads into the next point of the end plates. Now, this is probably the most interesting set we've got so far because they inwash. And that Which is unexpected, isn't it? Exactly. It's like it's almost like 2009, where there was a couple of teams that brought in wash front wings to the party, and everyone was like, "Well, you're just doing this terribly wrong." And it turned out they were. So, but this isn't going to be like some kind of gross oversight from Mercedes at all. This is something that they've genuinely come up with and think, "Okay, this is going to help us recoup some of our downforce further down the car." And you can see that they've angled the front front wing flap adjusters very aggressively outwards, and sort of hot take almost, but I think that what they're trying to do is create some kind of nozzle effect, drive, compress the air and jet it outwards almost around the front tyres. So it seems like it would be a very, very aggressive way of doing that. Um, the inboard section of the wing that's sculpted very, very nicely to assist with producing the vorces uh, that travel down the middle of the car and are then picked up by the barge boards and other such areas as well. And then uh, looking at the barge boards as well, um, you can see, as I've mentioned, all the intricacies along the bottom here. Um, they are noticeably shorter compared to what was on the car last year due to the new regulations. And they're further forward as well, which means that they can sort of scavenge airflow from the front of the car a lot more early. And you can see all the tiny little flow conditioners and turning vanes and winglets. And that's just going to very, very aggressively as well, just pull as much airflow around the side of the car as well, around these very neatly sculpted side pods as well. Um, and we can see all the, this floor scroll here, there are cutouts on the floor as well, just to ensure that Mercedes are able to pull as much airflow around the car as possible, use those floor slots and seal the floor as well. You can see that there's perhaps not as much rake in the car as we've seen from uh, Renault and a couple of the others. So they need to ensure that they're generating as much downforce with the floor as possible. And is Mercedes have pioneered a lot of this complexity. Giorgio Piola was talking to us last week and was explaining that even when the regulations were really restricted in this area, Merck were finding ways to develop some complexity. And since 2017, the teams have had a lot more freedom in this area. Is some of this stuff that's much further forward than before, which is now allowed in the regs, is that about making up for some of the airflow you've not been able to work as hard in this area of the car? Definitely, because um, at the front of the car, again, uh, I've explained on the previous video, so I don't really want to repeat myself too much, but the front of the car was absolutely vital in essentially penning in the weight produced by the front tyres. And they can't really do that anymore. So it's up to the barge boards to do a little bit more of the work 
drag it around the front of the car, ensure that you don't get all of this horrendous mass of turbulent air under the floor, which is just going to absolutely ruin everything by the time you get here. So yeah, the barge boards have a, lot, a little bit more work to do at least. One of the great things about how detailed the images of this car are, including the track shots that we'll get to in a moment, is that we're not just focusing on the bits that have changed because of the rules for this year. We can see lots of other things that Mercedes has done to refine the parts of the package that haven't changed. So what else is standing out to you on this car? So out of those, like, I think that the side pods are just so much more nicely sculpted compared to last year. They just blend in a lot more smoothly. There was a, a section here where it stopped and then it sort of fed into the rest of the car. And these lot, these don't do that. But yeah, Mercedes have bucked a trend here and they're trying to, instead of using the very high inlet Ferrari style uh, inlet, using the two crash structures, the sort of boundaries of that, they've just, again, but that trend and just gone for something very, very conventional. It's a very, very small inlet. Uh, it suggests that Mercedes have worked on cooling a lot more over the off season as well, just to try and bring those side pods in a lot more, reduce that frontal area of the car. Um, so yeah, it looks like a very, very dynamic solution. It looks a lot less cluttered, I would say, compared to perhaps some of the other solutions we've seen, but obviously, uh, I'm contradicting myself because there is all that complexity. And that packaging, of course, is tied into the fact that Mercedes are telling us that there's a brand new engine for 2019. So if they've been able to slim down where they need cooling and that sort of thing, they're obviously bringing more performance at the same time. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on under here as well, isn't there? Definitely. And what we know for this season as well is that there's an extra five kilograms of fuel allowed at the start of the race. Mercedes have been very, very aggressive in their press release as well, um, and, and last year as well, and weren't even putting the full 105 kilograms maximum you could use last year. They weren't even doing that last year. So 110, as long as they ensure that they're pushing the efficiency of the engine to the maximum, then they're still not going to need to do that. And then they're going to get to the start of the race with a much lighter car compared to everybody else because they're not sloshing about with an extra five kilograms of fuel. And they're able to make the most of what's on board the car. So there are gains in that kind of regard for the engine. Uh, again, with cooling, it's just a, a much, much tighter package, it seems. And we believe that Ferrari ends up with the best engine last year. So Mercedes have to claw that back. Yeah, Mercedes have been quite keen to point out that that extra five kilos of fuel, if you use it, is effectively a two tenths of a second per lap penalty. So if you can get away without using it, you've found two tenths. And if if they could find one aero piece on the car that was worth two tenths of a second per lap, that would be striking gold. So it seems that Merck aren't really interested in that extra fuel, and if they can avoid using it, they will. Moving away from the engine, what else is going on at the rear of the car that's interesting to you? Well, first of all, I want to just give a shout out to the suspension design at the rear. Um, they used this uh, raised section, uh, much like they do at the front, actually, here, like you can see here. They used that at the rear last season and it was sort of mounted on top of the hub and they've decided to move away from that and go closer towards what Ferrari did last year, which is very, very interesting. It suggests that Mercedes think, OK, we know that we don't have all of the answers here. And even though they're essentially the team to beat, they're still looking at other cars down the grid for, for inspiration, I guess. Is that, is that potentially rear tyre management? Because we know that was occasionally a weakness of last year's car. Oh, definitely. And um, there's also those, those wheels uh, we <laughs> saw. <laughs> there's another video about those. <laughs> that we saw last year. They were obscured with um, black paint, but they still have those that, again, trying to keep the rear tyre temperatures down, ensure that they're in the operating window. And then at the rear wing, you can see two T-wings here, one attached to what was the shark fin and another one attached to the swan neck rear wing mounts which is a trend that they're partaking in and um, they've also got the overhanging stripes at the, on the rear wing end plate which is something they used last year and there was a quote I think from Valtteri Bottas who was really really happy with having them on his car because it just really improved the rear end stability and presumably that's something that they've decided to chase again I think they removed them at the end of last season but obviously they've been retooled, reworked and I guess with the new rear wing, it gives them a little bit more of an opportunity to address that rear end balance. Yeah, very nice indeed. Now, if you've been watching our videos all week, you'll know that we always hand over to our technical illustrator, Giorgio Piola, to get his thoughts as well. And here's what he made of the early images of the Mercedes. 
Congratulations to Mercedes because this is the real first car that we saw 2019 car without any game of Photoshop or, or hiding or rendering whatsoever. This is the car that we started testing and is totally brand new and is very radical and very interesting in all the details. We started front wing as a, the step in conjunction with the neutral central area. They kept uh, the cape uh, under the, the chassis, but the nose, the nose cone is very, very narrow, straight, uh, and even narrower than the car from last year. You can, you can uh, realize how narrow it is in the conjunction with the chassis that, as we know, as you know, the chassis must have a fixed uh, measure. They kept the S duct, and most important, they kept uh, the, um, the pickup point of a suspension higher, the bracket, uh, as uh, last year, white Toro Rosso, they didn't have uh, any more, at least uh, in, the, in the car that we saw. The inlet, uh, both the side pod and hair box are quite big, uh, the biggest that we saw until now. And uh, especially the air box is a little bit also more square. Last year was a little bit more oval. Again, you, you know, see very well uh, the, how big are the inlet and how narrow is the car in the back. So uh, to have a better aerodynamic efficiency, they improve and uh, cooling. They improve the inlet, but they reduce at maximum the exit. Uh, so to have a a better airflow to the back of the car. Rim uh, became uh, black and, and this is not only aesthetic but also there is a technical reason. Uh, both front and rear are painted with a very special painting that keeps uh, control to have a better control of the temperature and uh, this is, was a crucial issue last year and they kept the shape uh, of the rim uh, that they introduced last year in Belgium. It's interesting, the brake duct uh, is in a position to work together uh, from an aerodynamic point of view with the lower wishbone and is divided in two sections.